Great to be with you. Uh, my name is Professor Tim Riley from Griffith University based here in Brisbane. This is the first of four short sessions which are part of a training package for construction designers. Uh, the outcome of a project uh, I've been working on with some collaborators across three universities for the Sustainable Built Environment National Research Centre, the logo shown in the bottom left. So this session of four recordings is about the use of products with recycled content in construction. I'm a professor here at Nathan Campus Griffith University and I've been working with colleagues from RMIT University and Curtin University. Before getting on with the session, I need to acknowledge the people who are the traditional custodians of the land. Uh, where I am now in the studio in Brisbane, it's the Yoga and Turbal people. Um, and acknowledge them and the people uh, wherever you're uh, listening and, and watching this recording from. So respect the elders past and present and extend that respect to other Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples. In terms of the course content, this is the first of four. And this one is about understanding the construction and demolition waste problem. The other three will then look at construction demolition waste materials, the design phase and sustainable construction strategies, and then finally case studies on products with recycled content in construction. Around 10 minutes each, I expect. I hope not just that you can tick a box saying you've done the training course, but you can actually go away uh, with things that you've learned and actually apply, look at some of the references, look at some of the tools. I hope some of the material is actually new for you. Some of it may be recap, uh, but I hope you find it useful and interesting. This training package is actually from a suite of projects with Sustainable Built Environment National Research Centre. Um, it's led uh, by RMIT, uh, and the material here focuses on the, the third and the fourth project, 1.85 and 1.95. So we started uh, actually way back in 2018 looking at construction, demolition, waste um, and management. Uh, and then we looked at stimulating end markets. And the training packages led by the Griffith team and myself here uh, have been on um, developing this training package, where the inputs from RMIT um, have been on many of the case studies uh, and designer architect aspects from Curtin University. I should have introduced myself. So I've been um, at Griffith University for around 10 years. Uh, my background's in transport. Um, I've done a lot of work in transport and civil engineering, more recently aviation, also a lot of work on the environmental side and sustainability, and um, bringing more into construction demolition waste uh, actually um, brings some of my environmental and transport background together. And like a lot of these projects, it brings people from different areas of, of interest, um, not just kind of construction and engineering. And this project is just finishing, um, and this is almost like the last thing that we do. So I hope you enjoy the course. Uh, and the training package across the four sessions is on construction designers. And uh, this is a design early phase of construction. Therefore, particularly relevant to the designer architect position, uh, critical for crafting initial design of a building or a space. Um, and it could relate to urban planners as designers or engineers that's building. I always add the transport and infrastructure to it. Uh, also landscape architects for the public realm as well. So it's a big suite of people involved, as I've said, across different uh, topics and skills uh, and subject areas. Development managers are the key people. They're often the decision makers and the commissioners. And when we talk about waste, it's those who have leadership roles, who make decisions. But in a sense, it's on all of us to um, improve uh, the recycling that we do through work and personally. So in terms of understanding the problem, construction is booming worldwide, driven by population growth, urbanisation and increased need for dwellings, business sites and commercial spaces. One statistic of, of many is that the construction industry will grow by 85% to $50.5 trillion by 2030. Large numbers. So it's not just about reducing the waste of the current amounts that we're doing, but given that huge growth in construction, that um, there is a lot more uh, on that waste to come. So it is a real challenge uh, in terms of waste management practices, 
uh, for construction and demolition waste. Bringing it to Australia, uh, uh, a useful statistic, 2020-21, uh, Australia generated estimated 75.8 million tonnes of waste. Um, almost exactly a third of it uh, from 2020-21 data is construction demolition materials. Uh, the remainder being uh, construction, commercial industry, CNI, or municipal service waste, MSW. As you can see from the bar chart on the left, so C and D waste in, in that black in the middle. But also a similar graph for that 75.8 million tonnes shows how it's split across a range of materials. So we think construction demolition activities, it could be brick, concrete, metal, timber, plasterboard, asphalt, rock and soil. So one of the, the big challenges uh, facing us is climate change. So in terms of global emissions for construction, uh, built environment generates 40% of annual global CO2 emissions. Um, that 40% shown on the left pie chart, uh, building operations, the building construction industry, but also other construction um, elements as to, to such as transport and infrastructure. That 23% uh, of uh, the materials, um, concrete, steel and aluminium, represent a large uh, chunk of emissions. So the real challenge on the, the climate side but also broader sustainability. Now, if we think of sustainability, um, the concept's been around for a while. Since 2015, there's been, uh, UN has defined 17 sustainable development goals. Um, and which ones are relevant here in construction demolition waste? Um, some more relevant to, to, to us than others. Um, certainly Climate Action SDG 13, you can see there, but also, uh, think um, SDGs like 11, sustainable cities and communities, uh, industry innovation infrastructure number nine, uh, decent work and economic growth number eight. So there's a whole suite um, of, um, of them relevant. And I, sh I should also have mentioned SDG 12, responsible consumption and production. Now clearly education is important and maybe that's where the training comes in at SDG 4. So it's good to know these things. It's important that we act sustainably and something like construction, demolition, waste and then recycled products, which we'll come to, um, are, will provide improvements across a range of SDG goals. Now, often when we, we come and approach uh, the challenge um, of waste, these two uh, figures come up prominently in the literature. So having a sustainable approach, um, the, the classic linear approach is uh, effectively to dispose of, the w of all that we produce. So the making dispose. So the circular naturally is about uh, reusing. So you make, use and then recycle. So that's where the key, key concept of recycling comes in, that we, we can have this circular economy, circular approach. Now in terms of the waste hierarchy on the right, you want a more favorable one at the top um, to least favorable at the bottom. So, um, Basically, that um, you can uh, reuse everything that you do. Um, the top one, actually, that you uh, avoid or reduce um, production completely. Um, and then the bottom, dispose of waste. So then you can see uh, recycling clearly on there um, amongst the resource recovery ones in the middle. So as part of these projects, uh, Salmon from the RMIT team uh, has led uh, a sustainability journal paper on this and here are some uh, statistics and data from that literature review. So recycling is identified as one of the targeted approaches to minimize C and D waste. Studies, uh, and this is one kind of example, uh, natural resource coarse aggregates, recycled aggregates can lead to reduction of up to 65% greenhouse gas emissions, so helping uh, in the climate change challenge. Uh, one country, Japan, uh, one statistic, typical residential building constructed recycled materials will save at least 10% of energy demand. Coming here to Australia, the energy consumption and resulting greenhouse gas emissions from recycling aggregate calculated to be around 4 kilograms per carbon dioxide per tonne, representing 22% uh, to 40% fewer than equivalent conventional quarry products. So clearly, different places, different materials, different recycling benefits, not up to 100%, but certainly we can start seeing some gains the more recycling that we do for construction demolition waste. 
And so it's also useful to have uh, sustainable recognition. So looking at the link below, uh, Property Operations Platform Mobile Link, you can see these four recognition ones. So with this training package, I hope it's not just click through, put it to one side, but you actually follow up. So maybe pause it or come back to it. Have a look at the link at the bottom and you'll see these uh, four certifications. So Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design Lead is American, US based. Uh, BREAM, uh, Building Research Established Environment Assessment Method is from the UK. So uh, Lead is, is more widespread. Uh, all of these, if you look at them and follow the links, they provide different levels, ratings, criteria, certification, you can get a stamp on what you're doing and producing. Um, Green Star, that's the Australian one. Founded by the Green Building Council of Australia. So like a lot of these things, it's a voluntary sustainability rating system. But to have that stamp uh, gives credibility in what's being done. So Green Star evaluates buildings across nine categories. Management, indoor environment quality, energy, transport, water, minerals, land use and ecology, emissions and innovations. Finally, uh, well building standard. I, I just brought this one in because it also has a broader approach to sustainability, looking at human health and well-being. So it's not just the environmental side of thing, but the, the, the social and personal side of thing with buildings, that you have health and well-being. So that's um, the first session completed. Uh, sustainable ability recognition certification is the last part. And then uh, I'll, I'll stop here and then feel free to dip into the second one, looking at different building materials. Thank you very much.